Today, we are going to discuss the Beyblade Burst Iceberg. If any of you don't know what an iceberg is, it's basically a bunch of facts slash theories about said topic, this one being Beyblade Burst, and we're just going to go over them. And they are in tiers from most to least known. Anywho, if you want to look more into that before the video, be my guest. The video will always be here. Anyway, let's get right into it. In the clear skies, so we have Hasbro's exclusive anime. After Beyblade Burst ended in 2022, Beyblade Burst fans were devastated, at least I sure was, until Hasbro came up with a great idea to write and release their own anime. Belle, once again, was the protagonist. And he, we had another protagonist named Pre, who was like the second main character, and a new character released just for Hasbro. An even lesser known fact about this is that Karatomi is now, after a year of this being out, redubbing it in Jap Japanese. It was Hasbro's anime where they are redubbing it to cast in Japan, which I think is really interesting. Characters never returning. This has always surprised me. You think you you have a character you really like from the first season you watched, and they never come back, despite having a high rank blader status. They could be in the Supreme Four, the Big Five, whatever they are. It's never. It doesn't matter how high of a status they are. They have their choices of who they're bringing back. Characters such as Zack, Renwu, and Joshua. Even Xander wasn't that... Well, he did get brought back, but... We had Daigo, who was one of Vault's first friends, never returned after Evolution. It's crazy. Why don't they return? Do they move on? Did they fall so low, so bad? Probably they moved on. Speaking of, let's do the same thing. Beyblade is sexist. To some of us, this is obvious. But some, maybe not so much. Our, we, we only had two real female bladers. You may say you may say that someone like Sasha or Gumita or Echika even count, but they are they're bladers, yes. But they're not respectable bladers. They are not competitive. They don't participate in tournaments. They don't win. They are just there to lose. They don't have their own Beyblades. They have knockoff recolors of Beyblades that already existed. Such as Sasha having Gabe's guy in on, but blue. And it doesn't have a bay spirit living inside of it. That's what all the female characters did. Until we had Ilya Mal, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit about her situation, which just proves this theory. But then Hasbro had to eventually make pre. So good for them. Cheaters. In Beyblade, there have been some illegal acts taking place. I'm just going to name two of the ones that I remember. One of the main cast of characters actually cheated. That being Tago Kurigami. He was nervous about losing, so he, he saw the dark web taught him a new trick. To shine a light in the opponent's eye so he would mislaunch. Our next story is one of Naoki Minamu, a scientist who was already eliminated, decided to do some tests, but it was not right. He actually did a similar trick to what Daigo did, except he tried to frame someone else for doing his dirty work. 
pretty despicable. How dare they cheat in Beyblade. This game is supposed to be fun. At least Daigo owned up to it, though. And the last thing we are going to discuss in the Clear Skies category is broken Beyblades. There have been lots of Beyblades that broke over the years. It's now becoming more and more common as the se seasons went by. The first ever Bay to break was Shu Kuronai Storm Sprizen. Then it just became more and more common. Especially after Shu became Red Eye, he broke like four bays. Let's see, he broke Garuda, Volt's Driver, and probably. Oh, he broke Luinor as well. And then we had five. And then it was just a common trend for villains to just go on these bay breaking sprees. It's very interesting. I hope you guys survive from the clear skies category. Because now we are moving on to the tip of the iceberg. Let's just get right into it. We talked a little bit about this first one, and that was the story of Magma Ifrit. If you guys don't know, Magma Ifrit was the first bay, the first original bay owned by a female blader. They had it in the Takeratomi Japanese anime, but... They didn't release it in real life because they thought it wouldn't have good sales. At least Hasbro released it in their Pro Series version. You know, where it's like almost at the same amount of quality as to Tony. Broken Bays in the manga. In the anime, we've seen plenty of bays breaking. We've seen from Spryzen to Luminor, even to lesser main bays like Garuda and Nemesis. But what if I told you, even more bays have broken in the manga. Such as... Joshua's Blast Genius and Ren Wu's Shelter Regulus. Yes. These guys' base have broken the manga, and probably so many more that I can't think of right now. But I'll definitely do my research onto it and let you know what I find. Cursing. In the Japanese sub, when you read the subtitles, in the Japanese sub with the English subtitles, they... The Beyblade characters actually have some slightly vulgar language. Even in the manga, there was a photo of Free flipping the finger, but even though that turned out to be Photoshop. Injuries. Beyblade seems like a dangerous sport, especially when it comes to the arms. We have had plenty of bladers hurt their arms in this show. From Shu to Free to Ranjiro. It's just a very common injury. And I thought that. I just think that's kind of weird. I don't really have much to say else on it, but it's just weird how launching a top makes you get this hurt. And to wrap up the tip, we have Shu's backstory. How did Shu get his scar? Well, if you don't know, listen to this. When Shu and Louie battled along, well, in the year before the anime was released, like a year ago in the flashback, I'm explaining that horribly, but anyway, Shu and Louie battled, and Louie wrung out Shu's bay and it hit him in the face. Causing his eye to bleed. 
And the worst part is Louie didn't even care. Well, let's get a little bit deeper, guys. We are going to the deeper depths. Depths. Getting deeper. First we have... Kids look like adults. Beyblade definitely has this trend where... Bladers that are claimed to be age 11 or younger look like adults. Standing at sizes of 6 feet even. It actually was revealed why this is. Hero Morito said it himself that it's to make things look more intense. Like, to make the kids look more threatening. You know, I'm not, I can't remember his exact words, but it's something along those lines. Fi. Fi is just a very odd guy. I think he, he's just... Definitely one of the scariest villains in ba the Beyblade universe. He has broken five Beyblades. He caused trauma to his own brother. He seemingly came from a meteor and caused a forest fire. And let's not forget those crazy animations. Where his eyes go black. We don't even know why they go black. I just thought that was something worth mentioning. Beyblades are magic. What are Beyblades? Why do they obey spirits? Something is up. Are these magical creatures possessing bays? Maybe the bond with the blader unlocks that magic. We really don't know. But we do know something is up with that. Censored moments. If you guys have exclusively watched the English version of the anime, you are honestly missing out on a lot. The English dub, I think, is one of the worst things I've seen for censoring. Like, things that aren't even necessary. Like, if a character blushes or tears up, it'll edit that out. One of my favorite censors was Ren Wu and his bow staff is green in the English. They censored the staff for some reason. It's just a weird choice to me. And they also changed a lot of the Beyblades' names. Some of them were understandable, but some of them I didn't think were that necessary. Bays like Lucifer, I understand why they would change that. Or Hell Salamander, they changed to Heat Salamander. Then we have bays like Kronos turned to Cognite, which didn't really seem too necessary. And the last one in the getting deeper tier. Weird fan art. I don't think there's really much I have to say here. But a lot of people in this fandom like to draw very odd fan art of mostly minor characters. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just look up Beyblade Burst fan art. Scroll for a little bit. And you'll know what I'm talking about. We have now reached the bottom of the iceberg. This is where things get even crazier and darker and more obscure. Toko and Nika are adopted. Just look at them. Look at Vault. Look at their parents. Volt looks just like his dad, and even like it, he is a lot like his mom as well. Volt is definitely an annoy. But Toko and Nika have no characteristics that represent their parents. I think when Volt was like five years old, his parents adopted Toko and Nika. Maybe his mom couldn't get more kids, or maybe they were doing it out of pure kindness. Who knows? But they are definitely. Not siblings with Vault by blood. They could not even be related to each other. Dead voice actors. 
we have lost some some of the Beyblade Burst voice actors have actually passed away from the English dub. And even more recently, we have lost Billy Kamitz, the voice actor who played Fabuki in Beyblade Burst Turbo. May they rest in peace. Free is an orphan. You heard it. In the manga, he actually lives in an orphanage. Or lived, I don't know if he still does. But yeah, Free does not have parents. Just a sad life, honestly. Adults battling kids. You know, in most sports, they have age categories, you know, to make things more fair. Like, imagine if we let middle school football teams play in the NFL. Like, that's just wild. But Beyblade doesn't seem to care about that. I know earlier I discussed how the characters that look like adults are 11. But... There are actually some canon adults that do battle with the children. There are some characters that are rumored to be adults, such as Fi and Hyde, Evil. But there are some characters who are confirmed adults, being Joshua Burns. I mean, he had adults... Of BC Soul fangirling over him. So he's definitely an adult. Well, then we have Vault in Quad Strike, would be around 18, I think. So Vault, Shu, Free, Louie are all very close to being adults. But they're still battling with people such as Belle, who is 11 years old. And lastly, the Snake Pit. The Snake Pit is a pretty messed up organization if you think about it. A man known as Theodore Glass takes these little boys down in this secret lair and pretty much abuses them to their breaking point. You've seen the training he puts these boys in. And the experiments he put Shu through, that is pretty honestly sick. The depths. These are the things that may just seem crazy. Well, one of them is canon, but let's get into it. Fi and Hyde aren't human. I've discussed this theory before, and I still strongly agree with it. Fi and Hyde are not human. Fi came from a meteor, for crying out loud. In the Bay Pop song, we see him riding out a meteor. When he first arrived, he started a fire. How did he do that? They don't even have last names. In the past, Fi's Wikipedia even said that he and Hyde were immortal, but that has now since been removed. Just a theory I thought of. Tell me what you guys think about that. The age changes. This one is honestly probably one of the most frustrating things about Beyblade is the age changes. The Wikipedia recently have removed almost every single character's age, but in the past, they've had ages. It would be on their main chart where it says their name, their occupation, etc. And their age would be on almost every character's. What's even crazier than that is... Back in the day... Like when Beyblade Burst God around when it first came out. Freeze Wikipedia said that he was 14. And Silas's was 15. But then, a few years later, that changed to now they are both 11 years old. 
But now there, Wikipedia is completely removed. I mean, the age on it is completely removed. So I guess we can just pick however old we want them to be now. Hikaru quit Beyblade. In the manga, after Lane destroyed Hikaru's bay, he quit. He sacrificed his own bay. He and Hayuga were battling together, and he sacrificed Helios to protect Hayuga. And I assume Hayuga ended up winning, but Hikaru was so traumatized from that event that he quit Beyblade and ended up pursuing soccer in the end of the Beyblade Burst sparking manga. Ryota's illness. If you don't know who Ryota is, he was Daigo's little brother in season one of Beyblade Burst. We never knew what he had. It's never been disclosed. There's no information on what he has. We assume it's not cancer because he hasn't lost his hair. But he was hospitalized, so it must have been pretty serious. And lastly, to wrap this up, all the Beyblade Burst characters are mentally ill. This may be a crazy claim, but I think Beyblades are holders of the demons in the bladers' heads, also known as the Bay Spirits. Think about it. Vault and Valtrick. Valtrick was this being living in Vault's head. And maybe Beyblades are given, like real actual Beyblades, are given to people with these monsters in their head to, you know, let them be able to come out. These tops are just that powerful. They can, like, connect to their heads. Or, I don't know. I just think that Bay Spirits could not even be real. They could be just a figment of the player's imagination or their insanity. Well, that ends the Beyblade Burst Iceberg, you guys. I hope you liked it. I've even thought of more theories and facts, so I might even do a part two if this one goes well. Thank you for watching. Peekaball is out of here. And question of the day. What's a Beyblade Burst theory that you have?